An institution that has been around for more than a thousand years is the British royal family. They experience a whole different world than the rest of us, since they were born into a life of opulence and privilege. However, they immediately became well known over the world after their birth. Due to the significance of maintaining the appropriate image, the family has attempted to hide a number of controversies throughout the years. And while every family has secrets, only a select handful has ones as sinister as theirs. Royals and scandals appear to have gone hand in hand over the years. There is never a dull moment when it comes to royals, whether it's about a queen who never wed suspected liaisons, or more recently, senior royals who opt to resign. It's time to examine more closely at 15 most difficult moments for the royal family. We appreciate you coming back to the channel. If you're new here and appreciate watching amazing videos, it would be a good idea to subscribe given that this channel frequently publishes excellent stuff. After subscribing, click the bell icon to start receiving updates right away. Let's start the video now without further ado. Number 15. Stepping Back From Important Royal Obligations The Duke and Duchess of Sussex, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, announced in January 2020 that they would be stepping down from senior royal responsibilities. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex announced their decision to make a change on their official Instagram account, at Sussex Royal, saying, After many months of reflection and internal discussions, we have chosen to make a transition this year, and we are starting to carve out a progressive new role within this institution. While continuing to completely support Her Majesty the Queen, we aim to stand aside as senior members of the royal family and work to become financially independent. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex are reportedly not only retiring from many of their obligations, but they also failed to inform the Queen in advance of their startling announcement. Number 14. Death and the Maiden Although Queen Elizabeth I never wed, the question of whether she was truly the Virgin Queen has been debated for a long time. Rumors of the Queen's hidden lovers began to spread as soon as she took the throne in 1558. Robert Dudley stands out among them all. Even yet, the question of whether the queen was a virgin or a murderer was raised in 1560 when Dudley's wife was found strangled to death at the bottom of a staircase. There are still unanswered questions. Don't miss these historical royal wedding scandals, which rank among the worst. Number 13. The Succession Crisis of 1817 In 1776, King George III lost the United States. In 1810, he also lost his mind. His inability to convince even one of his nine sons to wed a decent woman in order to have a legitimate heir may have been his most embarrassing scandal. After finally coercing his eldest son, the future King George IV, into marrying in 1795, the couple's lone child passed away childless in 1817 sparking a succession crisis that saw several of George's sons dump their girlfriends in order to wed European princesses in an effort to become the next heir. Warning: This sentence contains a spoiler. The victor was Edward, Duke of Clarence, King George III's third son, who was also the father of Queen Victoria in 1819. Number 12. The Trial of Queen Caroline King George III's son, who was named above became King George IV in 1820. The new king, who hated his wife Caroline of Brunswick and had been attempting to keep her off the throne for more than 20 years, had been living apart from her. George dragged Caroline to court, using adultery as the only valid reason for divorce, and he naively believed that the public would support him despite his own several well-known affairs. As an alternative, the populace supported Caroline, who was upset. As it is almost commonly remembered, the trial of Queen Caroline was not really a trial at all, but rather a discussion of a bill of pains and penalties that amounted to an investigation of the Queen's behavior while she was traveling the world as the Princess of Wales. The Prince Regent, at least, thought that the case would produce the proof that would allow him to divorce her. The evidence did, in fact, appear in great squalor, but the trial was postponed due to political considerations. Caroline was denied entry to the coronation in Westminster Abbey, and she passed away a week later. Number 11. The Airing of Royal Laundry by Charles and Diana Prince Charles, the Prince of Wales, and Diana, Princess of Wales, had an uneasy relationship from the beginning, but following their separation in 1992, Charles and Diana started publicly teasing each other about their affairs. 
It was a bit crowded because there were three people in this marriage. Diana memorably said to an amazing global audience, The dramatic impact of the event on fans throughout the world is captured in the Crown Season 5 trailer. When Diana was fatally injured in a vehicle accident in Paris 1997, the ugly came to an abrupt end. The third spouse in their union, of which Diana talked, was Camilla Parker Bowles, whom Charles later married. A royal analyst asserted that Prince Harry had become spiteful and full of self-pity, and that he is reportedly seeking revenge. According to the Mirror, royal authority, Camilla Tomini claimed that the 36-year-old Duke of Sussex had not taken any advice from his mother Princess Diana against airing his dirty laundry on television. Tomini wrote an article for The Telegraph in which she asserted, Let's make no mistake. Like Diana choosing to air her dirty linen on the BBC, this is a guy out for vengeance. While there are no disputing Harry's genuine intentions in wanting to raise awareness of mental health concerns, Tomini continued, he is repeating her mistake by squandering popularity for the purpose of balancing the score by trying to replicate her doe-eyed confessionals to convey his truth. She said, Harry continues to light the flames of attention with his self-pitying and even cruel statements, showing he has actually learned nothing from his mother's agony. Number 10. The Abdication of King Edward VIII On December 11, 1936, the former King Edward VIII addressed a surprising nation and said that he had abdicated the kingdom in favor of his brother in order to be free to wed Mrs. Wallace Simpson, the woman he loved. The nation as a whole, the majority of whom had been unaware of the royal love affair only a week earlier, heard the historic broadcast and culmination of the constitutional issue. Edward was aware of the ability of radio to reach people in their homes, since he had made the first ever royal broadcast. He was eager to tell the country his side of the story as the crisis worsened. The cabinet overruled his speech, in which he made the case for a morganatic union and claimed that he could wed Wallace without her ever becoming queen. When Edward finally made his transmission, George VI had become king and Edward was finally getting ready to leave the country. Even though it was sensational, King Edward VIII's abdication was motivated by love, not infidelity. The newly minted king declared in 1936 that he would wed Wallace Simpson, an American socialite who was going through her second divorce. There was a constitutional problem as a result of the king's marriage to a divorcee, who had a surviving ex-spouse, which was against both civil and religious law at the time. The king chose love above power and abdicated the throne less than a year into his reign, altering the course of history in an unprecedented and fiercely criticized action. Number 9. The Tumultuous Love of Princess Margaret In contrast to her sister, Queen Elizabeth II, Princess Margaret was free to follow her inclinations. And she did pursue them, beginning with a liaison with Peter Townsend, a married man. Townsend sought Margaret for her hand after divorcing his wife in 1952. But the scandal that followed was too much for the relationship to withstand. Margaret wed Anthony Armstrong Jones in 1960, but they eventually got divorced for a variety of reasons, including both parties' adultery. After the divorce, Tony got remarried rather quickly. Margaret's alleged indiscretions received a lot of attention. But Tony is also said to have had his share, according to the Telegraph. His second wife, Lucy Lindsay Hogg, is portrayed in The Crown as one of these mistresses. According to Women's Weekly, Tony and Lindsay Hogg started dating four years before their marriage ended. Lindsay Hogg married Tony for a second time in December 1978, not long after their divorce from Margaret had been finalized in May 1978. When allegations that Tony had cheated surfaced in 2000, the two decided to get a divorce. Princess Margaret, who died in 2002 and never remarried after her divorce from Tony, died before Tony, who went away in 2017. Nevertheless, it is said that she didn't have lunch with Peter Townsend in the early 1990s. They probably didn't see each other again until 1995 when he passed away. Number 8. The Annus Horribilis 1992 will be remembered as the Annus Horribilis of Queen Elizabeth II for all time. Horrible year. Three of the Queen's four children, Prince Charles, Prince Andrew, and Princess Anne, began the process of divorcing the respective spouses that year. If that wasn't awful enough, Anne got remarried later that year, even though her ex-husband was still living. 
This incident was perhaps even more controversial because it was the first, though not the last, time a British monarch's child had wedded after a divorce. Palace officials probably thought that the royal visit to India by Prince Charles and Princess Diana in February 1992 would have diplomatic resonance on the international scene. However, the trip is most recalled for a totally different reason. One of the most famous photos ever taken of Diana shows her sitting by herself outside the Taj Mahal. Diana went to the magnificent 17th century marble tomb by herself because Charles was at work elsewhere and posed for a picture that would symbolize their separation and foretell their breakup. Prince Andrew would bring much more scandal to the royal family in the years to come. The dissolution of his marriage, however, was the story making unfavorable headlines on March 19, 1992. The Duke and Duchess of York have begun talking to attorneys about a legal separation, according to a statement given by the palace. The BBC said that the Queen found the connection rumors surrounding Andrew and Sarah particularly unwelcome. In interviews, Sarah regularly referred to them as the happiest divorce couple in the world, even though they went on to divorce in 1996 and are still close friends and even cohabit. Number 7. Princess Camilla? The assumption is that Camilla will be referred to as Queen Consort when Prince Charles succeeds to the throne. When a British king marries, it is simply how it is done. On his official website, Prince Charles declared that Camilla would be referred to as Princess Consort after their marriage. Huh? Was the prince attempting to win over the public's unwavering love and respect for the late Princess Diana? It soon became clear that whatever he was doing, he had no control over anything. Later on, the sentence was taken down. Prince Charles was rumored to have been in love with his ex-girlfriend Camilla Parker Bowles before he wed Princess Diana, then Diana Spencer in 1981, then Camilla Shand. Charles and Camilla were married in April 2005 after a protracted courtship. The recently released fifth season of The Crown will go into more depth about their now well-known 17-year relationship. While we wait, let's take a look back at the entire love story of the current King and Queen of England, from their initial encounters and relationships during Charles' then-filling marriage to the late Princess Diana, to their current happy family life. Number 6. The Remarriage of Prince Charles to Camilla The world must have known it was coming, but when Prince Charles eventually wed the woman he had loved since before he married his ex-wife Diana in 2005, the world was shaken. It wasn't the first time a royal kid remarried following a divorce. Princess Anne holds that distinction but it was the first time the future king did so. The fact that Andrew Parker Bowles, Camilla's ex-husband, was and is still alive added insult to injury. Charles and Camilla apparently reignited their physical relationship in 1986, despite both of them being married and raising families. They had previously purportedly had an on and off connection, according to People. Diana famously claimed, there were three of us in this marriage, so it was a bit crowded in an interview for BBC One's Panorama in 1995. She also reportedly told Moulton that she had addressed Camilla about the affair, but to no avail. After living with Camilla at Clarence House since 2003, Charles announced his engagement to her in February 2005. On April 9, 2005, Charles and Camilla exchanged vows in a civil ceremony at Windsor Guildhall. An official blessing from the Archbishop of Canterbury was given at Windsor Castle, St. George's Chapel after the ceremony. Number 5. The Current Fiancé of Princess Beatrice Her Royal Highness, when she introduced Eduardo Mapelli Mosi as her new lover and eventual fiancé, Princess Beatrice created a little bit of a commotion. Although we only want the princess to be happy, there is a hint of scandal in the relationship. Ido, as he goes by, is a Chinese-American architect who has a small kid with Dara Huang. Although Dara and Ido are no longer together, Many people think Beatrice seduced Ida away from his baby's mother. Number 4. The Whole Nazi Thing When Prince Harry showed up at a Halloween party in 2005 dressed as a Nazi, it caused controversy. But Harry wasn't the first prince to be connected to the Nazi party because of his insensitivity. All of Prince Philip's sisters were wed to Germans, some of whom may have been Nazis, and King Edward VIII is said to have socialized with the Nazi party members. However, there is no proof linking the current royal family to the Nazi party, and the Queen and Harry have already expressed regret for the wardrobe gaffe. Number 3. Meghan Markle's rocky first year as a royal No one ever said that the transition from the commoner to royal would be simple. 
But for Meghan Markle, who constantly finds herself criticized for being difficult in one way or another, it seems to have been particularly challenging. R.G. Harrison Mountbatten Windsor was born to the Duchess of Sussex on May 6, 2019. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex's next move have still to be decided in light of the unexpected revelation that they will be stepping down from their major royal roles. Luckily, there is still special respect between Queen Elizabeth and Meghan Markle. Number 2. Crying of the Duchess of Sussex At the funeral for Queen Elizabeth II, held at Westminster Abbey on Monday, September 19, the Duchess of Sussex was spotted wiping away tears. Meghan was spotted gathering herself at several points during the tearful service. And later, she was photographed with Sophie, Countess of Wessex, the two of them appeared to be sharing a tissue. During the interview with Oprah Winfrey that Meghan and Prince Harry had in March 2020, Meghan was clearly overcome with emotions as she made a painful statement. At the height of her crisis in the monarchy, Meghan admitted that she had suicidal thoughts while pregnant with Archie, telling Oprah, I simply don't want to be alive anymore. Number 1. Prince John of Britain passed away at age 13 after suffering from severe epilepsy and autism. Prince John, who would be Queen Elizabeth II's uncle if he were alive today, is a royal relative. However, the young prince passed away in 1919, when still a teenager, during a seizure. Infrequent visits from the royal family and being kept out of the public eye were just two of the challenges he faced throughout his brief life, according to letters that were found years after the prince's passing. He was also moved to reside at an estate where he received this treatment. The family was greatly relieved by John's death, according to his older brother, Edward VIII, who eventually abdicated the crown to wed an American D4C. Edward later compared John to an animal. And that's the wrap, guys. It's not easy to be part of the royal family, is it? Well, which one do you feel was the most difficult moment for the royals? Also, do you feel that there's still more to come? Do let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Click the bell icon and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the content. Give it to your family and close friends. Goodbye and have a good day.